This is a moment in Jewish history. The Gulf War started in August 1990 when Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein invaded neighboring Kuwait. Operation Desert Storm saw the United States lead a coalition of countries against Iraq. In January 1991, Iraq began shooting missiles into Israel. The war ended on the morning of February 28, 1991, which corresponds to the 14th of Adar, Purim, the Jewish holiday that celebrates the defeat of the wicked Haman and the victory of Queen Esther and Mordechai. I reached out to friends and listeners about their personal experiences during the Gulf War. Well, at that time, I was living in Moshab Modin. I just remember that Purim in the afternoon, we got a message saying that all the windows were closed up with plastic, with tape, so that no gas could get in if there was a bomb that would fall. We were afraid that uh, Saddam Hussein was going to gas everybody with some kind of bombs that would be uh, lethal uh, gases. So they had everybody in their rooms, and you had to put up plastic on all your windows and tape the plastic to the windows so that if the bomb would fall and the gases would spread, it wouldn't go in your house. And the bombs were, you know, were coming into Israel constantly. We heard a number of explosions not too far away from the Moshe, but in an open area. The feeling was as if this was something biblical happening. All of a sudden, on on Purim, you know, that it ended. It was like right out of a Purim story. And they said, we can take down the plastic. And everybody just started ripping all the plastic off their windows. (laughs) No more bombs falling. And uh, it was Purim. (laughs) It was Purim. I lived in Carmiel, in the Galil, during the first Gulf War. At the time, I was married and had a baby daughter. One of the first sirens, my wife and I put on our masks. We put our baby into a box, a special box, I think called a mamad. Our baby daughter did not cry. She did not cry with the siren. She did not cry being put in the box, uh, nothing. Until after we got the all clear siren, and then my wife and I took our mask off. And then she started bawling. I didn't realize I was that ugly. People were worried that Iraq would send over biological missiles. We would call them abach. Aleph for uh, Atomi, Bet for uh, Biologi, Ka for Himi. And that's why we had gas masks and uh, why we weren't necessarily trying to get into the strongest places. In the end, they didn't send, if I remember correctly, they didn't send any such missiles. All missiles were just plain exploding scuds. I did shave my beard, even though I'm Orthodox Jewish and don't use a razor. I did use a razor that time. The reason for that was so the gas mask would fit. I was annoyed with uh, Robin one of the Schulz who didn't, but he explained that not everyone thought that they were going to be chemical missiles. And in the end, they turned to be right. I had a good friend, even though he was living in Israel, he was Jewish and very Zionist. He was an employee of the American government. And when the war started, the Americans told all the employees they had to leave now. And it was in Shabbat. My friend, like I am, Shomer Shabbat, but he went because of the Bikuach Nefesh, also because there really wasn't much time to, to think about it. What I remember is, I just finished high school. Yeah, there was sirens, up and down sirens. Then you have to go into the Cheder Atum, sealed room. You have to seal the windows, because I thought it's biological uh, missiles from Saddam Hussein. So my father, Allah Shalom, he was a doctor in Soroka at the time. He would wake up like five, six. And he would ride on his bike to the hospital while there were sirens going on and people didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah, I was in the sealed room with my Ima Choreget and the dog. We had to put on our masks, the gas masks, and there was no mask, gas mask for the dog. So we hoped for the best. Yeah, we just stay there until they tell us uh, we can leave the rooms. I originally made Aliyah right before the Gulf War had started. Obviously, I had to learn Hebrew, so I went down south to a kibbutz, kibbutz Ravavim in the Negev, southern Israel, the desert. And I took my ulpan there. I actually spent a year and a half there. I was in the Cheder Ochel, the dining room, and I was on the phone with the United States with a family member. She was like, why aren't you running to your bunker? We had already been preparing at this time. You know, our windows were taped up, gas masks were being handed out. And I was like, 
what are you talking about? The Gulf War had started again, I, I believe it was in August. Come January is when they started shooting Katushas at Israel. She's like, why aren't you running to your bunkers? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, I'm watching CNN and you're getting bombed. <laughs> I was like, well, so that's how I found out that we were in the middle of a war. Uh, only four Katushas came in our proximity during that whole period. So we were kind of immune to it, I guess is the word. But we had gone on a Zionist seminar from the Negev to Tel Aviv. The sirens started going off and all the people from the center of the city and from Jerusalem and from the, you know, the cities, they were all running into cover and, you know, we're from the Negev. We were kind of, you know, shwa shwa laid back, easy, easy. And we went up on the roof and cracking up beers and we were watching the Patriot missiles knock the Katushas down. And that was my introduction to Israel and interesting times they were. Also at that time was the migration of the Ethiopians. I also had volunteered when we brought them back over here, also in 91. We were meeting them at the airport and handing out food packages and gas masks as well. And that's another little tidbit I remember from that era. I have two stories about the Gulf War. The first one, I was living with two other guys. We were three single guys living in uh, Katamon. Everybody was stressed out. I said, this is a great time to have a party because... Anybody who's going to be stressed out won't come to the party. Who needs to see them anyway? And anybody who's cool about it will come to the party and we'll have a great time. And that's exactly what we did. I had a small apartment. We stuffed about 30, 40 people there. And then towards the end of the party, you'll find out in a second why it was the end of the party, there was a alarm, a siren. So everybody had to grab their masks and run into my room, which was the safe room. So it was really, really tight there. And then when the, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes were up or the siren stopped, everybody said, okay, I guess this is the end of the party. <laughs> so that was the end of the party. It was a lot of fun. People really complimented me that I made a, a party during the middle of the Gulf War. Towards the end of the war, I was in Miluim. It was in reserve duty. And this was, I think, before Oslo or something like that. So yeah, it was certainly before Oslo. We were in Gaza, I was in the Gaza Strip, and I was in charge all by myself in guarding all, not of the Gaza, but there was some other small city over there. Like it was me facing this entire city on like a, a little mountain, and I was in charge of, of the whole city. It was a little bit crazy, at least that's what I remember. And then all of a sudden I could see the rockets coming in from Iraq, and being hit by the Iron Dome or whatever we had in, the, in those days. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. And that's all I remember. Oh, and before that Miluim, we were the Miluim Nikim. We were the reserve dude, and we were doing practice in a, a base of basic training guys. So the basic training, there was a, an alarm, and the basic training guys all ran into the safe space with their masks. And we didn't even have our masks. We forgot them in our cars. And the commander of that, of that uh, basic training unit said, I'm sorry, you can't come in here because this is just for my basic training unit. So we just like, all of us, me and Lumina can just sit around and said, okay, what are we going to do now? Basically, that's what we remember. We just remember the funny parts. Oh, and at the end, it was uh, Purim when it ended. So that was the funniest part of them all. Basically, there was all the equipment that we were giving, like masks and uh, incubators for babies to the public and we went there and measuring like masks to see if they fit and I strongly remember the smell of the rubber still remember it till this day and that's a significant thing it was like a mask with a filter in the end and the incubators were like thing like a tent like a plastic thing where you put the baby inside and uh, close it Basically, like instructions, how to seal the rooms, the safe rooms you have in each house. We didn't have the mamadim, like safe rooms. Back then, today, it's uh, mandatory for each uh, constructor to build a safe room in every uh, building. But back then, we didn't have it. So they just told us to seal their door around the door with the tape as much as we can to avoid gas 
inside the room and my aunts and uncle they came to my parents house because we lived in the Samaria and there was not targeted as like the center Tel Aviv like Gushtan area so they came to us and I remember them we were all in the room in my parents house they have like a storage room that we were all in like all the kids and we saw like my parents and my uncle standing by the window and watching the rockets going down on the Gushdan area also my brother was born my mother had to go to the hospital in Kfasaba to deliver my brother Yonatan but I, I know this but I don't remember seeing her go and also back then it was like the most popular custom in Purim was Saddam Hussein and the Purim holiday customs around the Gulf War. I was in yeshiva in Israel in 1990. My yeshiva had 120 boys, 70 went home because of the war, 50 of us stayed. I was named to be the head of the sealed room on my floor in the dormitory, which means that every time a siren went off, I was in charge of making sure that everyone got to our floor, and then I sealed up the floor. It was one floor of the dormitory that we sealed completely. We had tape all over our windows, we had gas masks, and in the middle of the night, we'd have to run and put on the gas masks when the siren went off. As someone who grew up in the United States and never experienced anything like this before, I remember one night, we all of a sudden started hearing these booms during the siren. It turns out they were Patriot missiles from the United States that were shooting down the missiles that Saddam Hussein shot. But it was definitely a time filled with prayer and a time where I felt a great identity and connection with the people of Israel. We didn't know it was going to happen on Purim. At a certain point, we thought that there was going to be no Purim celebration. And then all of a sudden, the war came to an end right before Purim. By Amim Haheim Bazman Hazah, I remember the feeling with joy of running to pull off the tape from the windows and putting away the gas mask and just feeling so liberated and so free and truly feeling a redemption of the Jewish people as Purim is supposed to be. And we had full Purim celebration with dancing and singing and freedom. And it was a greatest, greatest feeling to be able to connect to what our ancestors experienced in the time of Purim, where out of nowhere, all of a sudden, v'nahafohu, they become free from Haman's decree, we became free from Saddam Hussein's decree, and were able to truly give thanks to God for this miraculous experience. It was a great, great celebration of redemption and connection, and something that I'll never forget. I would like to thank those who participated in this special Purim broadcast in this order. Reb Yankala Shemesh, Chaim Roman, Mordechai Fisher, Raz Telchai, Gidon Ariel, Mati Lieberman, and Rabbi Dov Lipman. This has been a moment in Jewish history. Thank you to all who participated. And if you have any questions or comments, you can check out my website at benbreski.substack.com. Thank you to all the listeners, and Shalom.